Hi, I'm Shelley Betcher, and you're watching Uncorked in Calgary's Hump Day Bargain Wine of the Week. Today we're speaking to Mark White at uh, Zinn in Inglewood, and he's going to speak to us about a Spanish bargain wine that he's chosen. Mark, can you tell us a little bit about the wine that you've picked for today? Well, I've chosen this beautiful little Spanish wine uh, for a couple different reasons. Number one, price point. We know that in this market right now, everyone's kind of looking for value out of their wines. And secondly, because uh, we kind of have an exclusivity on it, so you aren't able to get it anywhere else in the city. And the wine is Las Pizarras, as you can see here from the label, and it's from the region of Catalonia. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what is the price point on that? It is twenty-five dollars, or if you get it by the case, then it's twenty-two fifty. Normally, it would be around thirty, thirty-five dollars. Okay. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about the region that it's from. Well, the northeastern part of Spain, so where you, the city of Barcelona is, you have the region of Catalonia, and that borders to the north, uh, France, and then to the east would be the Mediterranean Sea. And Catalonia itself is, is steeped in history. Uh, if you remember back to uh, you know, Knights Templar and the Cathars and everything like that, they were the, kind of the French side of things. And then on the uh, Spanish border, which wasn't called Spain at the time, this was the uh, Kingdom of Aragon. And they fought back and forth over this land, which was really not that rich agriculturally, but it had political significance for not only the Kingdom of Spain, but also the Merovingians and the Visigoths later that came into the southern part of France to kind of overrule that area. Mainly because there's a nice pass in between the two countries, so um, population flow could work between that. So whoever kind of controlled that area, of course, had the larger political power. Then in uh, the late 1970s and early 80s, the region became very well known for its agricultural development, even though it is quite mountainous, but the valley floors have you know, good minerality, they have good soil, all those kinds of things, and with that came wine growing. So Mark, tell me a little bit more about what you would pair this with. Well, this is a type of grape varietal, uh, you know, garnache, as the Spanish call it, that has good fruit component to it, usually a little bit kind of a sweeter fruit, if you think of the French Southern Rhone Grenache. Um, but at the same time, there's a really nice undercurrent of earthiness, you know, so you can put this with game dishes. I was thinking something like lamb, venison, even prosciutto, um, even your everyday ham that you're cooking, that would work as well, you know, because there is a good tannic backbone to it, but there's also this delicious juicy fruit to it as, as well. So Mark, we're sitting here in the private wine cellar it's in. Tell me a little bit about what this building used to be. Well, the building sat uh, empty for a lot of years, but prior to that, this was all part of the uh, um, Alberta fish hatchery. So this would have been built in the early 50s, and then it became the Inglewood Aquarium. And for years, you actually had these large aquariums right in the building. They had little fish ponds that were out front from the store, and then in behind us was the actual uh, fish hatchery. So it's a magnificent, old, and really well-built uh, building. Like, the beams are very, very close put together, so you knew that there must have been a lot of weight in here at the time. And someone had told me that at one point it was the largest landlocked aquarium in Western Canada. Uh, the big thing is temperature. You know, you have a lot of uh, insulation with these types of walls. So what we're sitting in right now, for instance, probably is one of the largest, not totally sealed, but virtually sealed, temperature controlled, humidity controlled cellars. So we know that we've got all this wonderful Bordeaux sitting here and it's going to be well taken care of and it's not going to dry out or it's not going to see a lot of light and, and in time, of course, oxidize too much where you know the wines uh, might not be performing up to their best. Thanks, Mark. So here you have it, folks. Las Pizarras from Spain. Until next Wednesday, I'm Shelley Betcher, Uncorked in Calgary.